In the Africa-US trade, the US side has many advantages. You have developed structures that guarantee the investors. You have financing. But on our side, access to finance is weak, and the supportive inf infrastructure that you take for granted is not there. Therefore, we are at a distinct disadvantage in the trade. In the, in the context of trade policy towards Africa, the U.S. African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGWA, has been the major instrument in promoting Africa's exports. I'm told that non all exports from AGWA countries to the U.S. have more than tripled since the AGWA was enacted in 2000. But I learned also that the AGWA success may not be sustained. The global financial crisis has had a severe impact on U.S.-Africa trade. According to the data that I was giving, to the, the U.S. Department of Commerce estimates that Africa's exports to the U.S. to the U.S. have been severely impacted in several key export exits, with declines especially in agriculture and textile. Last year, total U.S.-Africa trade declined by something like 50%. So given the currently challenging and uncertain environment, something more needs to be done about AGOA's future, because the, the AGOA expires next year, 2015. AGOA's simplicity has been central in enabling more trade between the U.S. and Africa countries. But we need to create new market opportunities for African exporters. And in helping the partners in the U.S. overcome some of the key challenges hindering greater African trade and investment. This is the time to change the U.S.-Africa relationship from one of donor and recipient to that of business partners, especially in key countries and critical sectors. Africa's trade requires a stable and predictable framework. Without the uncertainty and volatility that has been associated with the global system and our development process. We in Ghana have experienced some significant challenges in 2013, and let me elaborate. Global market conditions are worsening, and they're affecting emerging and frontier countries like Ghana negatively. These have aggravated short-term risks and vulnerabilities and have contributed to uncertainty and instability. To take the major one, weakening commodity prices. These have decreased export earnings from Ghana, reducing our capacity to finance imports and thus increasing pressure on our foreign exchange reserves. Of our two major exports, cocoa and gold, cocoa prices have cumulatively declined by about 20% since 2011. Gold has suffered a cumulative decline of something around 25% from 2011, only that now gold is on the upswing. In 2013, therefore, the Bank of Ghana estimates that we lost $1.3 billion of potential export revenue due to the price declines of these two products. So there's a lot of pressure put on our reserves, and these have contributed to the high rates of currency depreciation that we've witnessed in the last couple of weeks. The initial steps the central bank has taken is to reverse the decline in the value of our currency. And this may be frustrating to a number of importers. But we know that the Ghanaian people, especially the export sector and the people who operate in the export sector, will appreciate the necessity for this. 
This exchange rate action has to be put in the pro proper context. Because resulting from the exchange reforms of the 1980s, Ghana made significant economic successes. Growth rates averaged 7% in the period between 2001 and 2012, allowing us to introduce social sector interventions that protected the poor and helped us to achieve, make significant achievement in the Millennium Development Goals. It is therefore not the intention to abandon the policy that has contributed so importantly to improving livelihoods in our country. So our reforms seek to restore policy credibility, stability, and certainty in our economy. It helps investors to plan. It also seeks to reinforce legal requirements for doing business and reduce the dollarization of our economy. Maybe US government officials and trade people will not understand our concern about dollarization. But the reforms seek to assure investors, both domestic and foreign, that we will work to create a competitive environment that will assure them of adequate returns from their investment. So it is on that note of assuring the investors that we seek to work to provide a competitive business environment that assures both domestic and foreign investors of returns, adequate returns from their investment. So on that basis that I thank you for inviting me and to welcome you to Ghana. I wish you very good deliberations and hope that we'll have an opportunity later to look at the results of this summit. Thank you.